welcome you to New Delhi for the sixth edition of Sci-Fi, which has uh, become a nice Indian conference on technology, security, and society. It's one of the many conversations that India now hosts, discussing some of uh, the most critical questions around this area. And uh, we are, as a community, contributing to uh, the Indian narrative uh, on uh, many of these uh, vital questions around the digital space. Since we last met, ORF hosted its first Sci-Fi Africa in Morocco, where we were able to bring over 140 speakers from 40 countries to discuss uh, innovation, growth, and equity at a time when digital technologies are appending the traditional models that have organized societies and countries. Uh, we have um, our host from uh, uh, Morocco with us, and I'll be inviting him to the stage in a, in a bit. Uh, but certainly, uh, for us at ORF, being able to take this community to a new geography, to listen to new voices, and to hear new wisdom from, from new minds who are beginning to engage with this subject was indeed satisfying. Our platform indeed prides itself on diversity, race, gender, ethnicity, age, and geography, and you will find all of it here. Last year, I had um, mentioned that we at ORF would try to reach gender parity when it comes to speakers at Sci-Fi. This year, I'm happy to report we are at 46% uh, because we had a couple of dropouts. We had, but what we, are, what we have done certainly is that 60% of all grants we have given out have gone to women. So we as organizers are, are putting our money where I think it needs to be. We need to bring diversity into the room. We need to bring different geographies into the room. And I think this uh, is important. It is not an end in itself. For us, it is uh, a means uh, to solve the fresh posers with fresh solutions. And I think that's why diversity is important. It is not any effort, affirmative action. It is indeed an efficient and important action. And that's what we see this as. The last couple of years have exposed a uh, fault line in what was once considered an integrated and seamless digital space, making it clear that the world is searching desperately for new ideas to manage cyberspace. The European Union, with whom we had a track 1.5 this afternoon, believes that the GDPR will protect individual rights in a data-rich world. It is also taking a few steps which are likely to change the landscape. The US is upending accepted norms, such as network neutrality. It is also beginning to take action as a sovereign against certain countries. The UNGGE, that's the multilateral forum, has failed to reach a consensus on state behavior in cyberspace. India's Aadhaar ecosystem has finally received judicial sanction that has left out the involvement of its burgeoning private sector on this platform, and it has left many people unhappy with the outcomes. Meanwhile, the Chinese are resolute in their promotion of the Digital Belt and Road Initiative and are ambitiously rolling out their solutions, products, and indeed their ethics across the vast geography. The Russians have reconfirmed their unique role as the most potent disruptive power, which holds uh, true for the digital space as well. And these developments have raised questions across the globe and have further imposed significant implications for the future of cyberspace and for cybersecurity. In today's time, when we talk about how the evolution of new technologies is persistently probing our capabilities to manage them and their social and political consequences, it is clear that the synthesis of predictive technology, autonomous systems, and intelligent beings will test our ability to govern nations and societies. We must then ask if technology itself is the answer to our problems. Can it provide tools and solutions to address the disruptions it creates? Even if this is possible, is it desirable? Are we so overwhelmed by what the technology has to offer that we are ignoring the risks that it imposes? Or are we better off placing humans at the frontier of designing emergent systems? Should existing and accepted political regimes exercise control over our technology-enabled future? Again, is this possible or even desirable? Developments in intelligent platforms and services throw up, and with apologies to Donald Rumsfeld, two known unknowns and two unknown unknowns. The first known unknown is the effect of AI on bias along the lines of race, gender, and class. We are quite not aware of what the casual pathways of bias will look like and whether AI will simply mirror or exaggerate existing problems. The second known unknown talks about the geopolitical consequences of differential access to autonomous and intelligent systems. The first unknown unknown 
is based on whether the current conversation on ethics in AI will eclipse a right-based approach to develop intelligent machines. And as the international community appears closely connected, it is important to question if we also share universal ethics. So when we speak about ethical AI, whose ethics are we configuring? The second unknown unknown puts forth concerns regarding the interweaving of identity between human and machines, raising questions that if we engage machines in any activity that involves human emotions, what does that make machines? More importantly, what does our engagement with them tell us about ourselves? The way we speak to machines, is it a conversation with our own being? ORF truly believes that unless we don't bring together diverse perspectives and guarantee the plurality of opinion, it is likely that the cyberspace will fall prey to the 20th century paradigms where might is right and the power of amplifier decides the discourse. At Sci-Fi this year, delegates, speakers, and participants will debate many such fundamental questions that are agitating cyberspace. They will search for new solutions, assessing which values, actors, and institutions will be key to managing technologies of the future. And they will seek to ideate a new role for humans in the knowledge age, responding to the enduring need for equitable social structure and governance mechanisms. Essentially, what is at stake for human society in the 21st century is means of providing paychecks, protections, and purpose. We, with the World Economic Forum, will, in the next two days, be bringing out a series of uh, research uh, on uh, the youth aspirations, on the future of jobs, and we will be sharing those uh, findings and publications with all of you. Uh, Mr. Pradhan, the Minister for Skilling, will be with us on, on the 5th, and we will release on that day uh, a World Economic Forum ORF report on the future of jobs and the youth aspirations around the digital age. And that's something that might, uh, be, might resonate with many of you coming from many different countries. We are pleased that Sci-Fi Platform has received a growing community of stakeholders to discuss these issues out of India. And I emphasize the word India. New Delhi, which has been the capital of numerous civilizations, of multiple regimes, and the epicenter of over a billion individuals, is an increasingly important venue to host an important community that discusses these key questions. We look forward to the next three days and hope that Sci-Fi can generate ideas to prevent conflict, provide an arena to where we can contest our own ideas of how we should manage the world and platforms where we may discover elusive consensus. I wish you all very interesting three days and I thank you all for uh, taking time out from your busy calendars and joining us in New Delhi. Before I move to uh, the opening panel where we will have a glimpse of an Indian debate, of a Indian debate, I, and I must emphasize that this is just four people out of 1.3 billion who will give you their view of, of what they think about a certain thing. And I must tell you, each four of them changes their mind frequently. So this is their view only for this evening. Uh, let me invite on stage the chairman of the Observer Research Foundation, Mr. Sanjay Joshi. And, um, And uh, let me invite uh, the president of the northern regions of Morocco, uh, Mr. Elias Alomari, uh, who was the host of Sci-Fi Africa. We want, to, we want to take this opportunity. We'll be actually giving a few mementos this time to people who have uh, created something new, something different, something worthwhile. The first one goes to Mr. Alomari for Sci-Fi Africa. I think he has done a seminal job of bringing the global community to Morocco to discuss important matters of... of Internet governance. Mr. Joshi, will you present the uh, uh, memento to Mr. Omari? This is also a way of reminding him that we want to come back next year. <laughs> Mr. Omari, you can take your seat there. Mr. Joshi, you can stay. You can, you can remain on stage. We'll, we'll need you now. Uh, 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 can I also now invite uh, uh, the other name holders here, Mahima Kaul, Arun Sukumar, and Bastia Lata Reddy, and we will indulge in 30 minutes of banter, 35 minutes of Indian banter on uh, the state of uh, the digital conversation here. Um, there were suggestions last time at Sci-Fi that uh, we did not see, uh, we did not hear enough of an Indian conversation. So this is the only Indian panel that you will have uh, over the next three days. Uh, the other panels belong to all of you.